In this part of the module, we're going to look about introducing ourselves. For how often does somebody say to you, what do you do? And most of us, the answer is, uh, oh, uh, it's a bit hard to... Uh. So number one, <laughs> we don't look very confident, we don't look very professional, and we feel awkward. So we need to practice this, because if someone can explain what they do with clarity and confidence, you've just increased the chances they'll want to know you better, and maybe even move forward in whatever that relationship is, or buy, or help. So, a couple of things to look at. Don't be do too detailed. If you say to me, in my, for example, my field, you know, Phil, what do you do? And I turn around and I say, well, you know, I, I help people with their networking, and what I do is I do workshops, and then I do coaching, and you know, I talk to them about this, and then I do that, and then I, you're starting to fall asleep. It's too detailed. So what we need to do in our presentation is very concisely explain a benefit of what you do. Think about one product or service that you're going to explain. And we're going to talk about this in a second, how we do that. But number one, you need to be memorable. Whatever it is, you need to be remembered. If you think about most networking environments, there could be between 30 and 100 people. How are they going to remember you? So number one, how do they remember you? And that's going to come down to your conversation and the way you come across. And secondly, do they want to see you again? If they don't remember you or don't want to see you again, you've just wasted your time, you might as well have stayed home and watched Netflix. So, think about our elevator pitch. Now this is a term I don't particularly like. And the reason I don't like the term elevator pitch is because it's about selling at somebody in the time it would take an elevator to go up. We've already established networking is not about selling. However, for the sake of this, everybody understands what it means. What I'd like to consider is, though, how you let people know what you do so that they can, be, they can remember it and help you generate opportunities. So not by selling, but by clearly explaining. So number one, you need to obviously tell them what your name is and the company you work for, but also what you do and why but be specific. Now, again, we need to generate curiosity. So a good way, by the way, of getting people to listen to you more is to ask them about themselves. So personally, when someone asks me what I do, one of the first things I'll do is say, look, so I can put that in context, just tell me what you do. And we, we hit this in an earlier module. If they then turn around to me and say they're a sales manager, I can amend my presentation of what I do that's important to them. If they turn around and say they're a business owner, I can amend what I do slightly so it becomes important to them. It's something that sticks in their head so they understand it. If I talk about something that's wrong, they lose interest, they don't remember me. So the best way to do this is to find out what they do so you can put your, ante your answer in a context they will understand. We also need to talk about the benefits of what we do, not the features. The difference between features and benefits. So for example, if you've got an umbrella, a feature of the umbrella is the colour, the shape, the handle, what it looks like. The benefit of an umbrella, it stops you getting wet, or in some countries, it stops you getting hot and cooking. That's the benefit. So when we talk about benefits, people buy benefits, not features. If I turn around to you and say, I teach networking, I teach referral marketing, I do uh, um, online shows, I do speaking, that's a feature. A benefit is, I help you save time and earn more money. More interested? <laughs> we also need to look at explaining scenarios. A great way of explaining what you do is to explain a scenario. Again, for example, if, I have, if I'm speaking to you and you tell me you're a sales manager, and I say, okay, so, so you're a sales manager, right? Okay. So in my experience, what I do is, you know when you have a sales team, and particularly in a recession, when things are tough, and you're having a meeting, and everyone's saying, how do we get more sales? How many people do you think turn around and say, what if we could get our sales team to all go networking? What would it mean if every one of those could bring in their own deals rather than relying on the company? Do you think they might have more opportunities and for free? Because I've explained a scenario that might have happened in your company. It sticks in your head, it's real, you remember. And 
even if you haven't experienced that, if at some point in the future you're sat in a room and your boss turns around and says, how do we grow our business? We're in recession. What should we do? You might turn around and go, let's go networking. I know a guy and I've got a referral. Another thing we can talk about, by the way, is some people are not business orientated. The most, the best way to build relationships is on things that are not work, hobbies, passions. So don't be afraid to ask people what they do when they're not working. If you find you have a synergy over a sport, you immediately bond. If I say to you watching today that I'm a triathlete, I also play underwater hockey, I love cooking meals with my friends, and I'm into health and fitness, there's a lot of you I've immediately bonded with and you feel more comfortable if you have that similarity. If you don't, it's my job to find out what that similarity is so we bond further.